In this video, uh, we are going to value a two period American call option on a stock. And for this stock, there is an expected dividend of $2.60 in period one. Okay, which is uh, in this case, period one is uh, here indicated by the red arrow. Now we'll later on see that uh, with a dividend, it may actually motivate the long call option holder to exercise early. For the long call holder, when there is a dividend, it actually hurts them because the long call holder doesn't receive the dividends okay, during the life of the option unless they choose to exercise the option earlier to receive the dividend. Okay, But of course, in order to motivate or in order to make sure that it's worth the while, the value of the stock and the dividend must exceed the exercise price of the option and it must also exceed the value of the call option at that point in time. Now, the inputs that we're going to assume here are as follows. The initial price of the stock is $65. So I'll just write 65 here. And uh, the exercise price of the call option is 60. The up factor of price is 1.25. The down factor is 0 0.75. And the risk fee rate is 2%. Now, before we start, we will need to calculate the present value of the dividend and we will need to subtract the present value of the dividend from the initial price. Now, with the dividend expected in period 1, we will discount it back by 1 period to period 0. So, the present value of the dividend uh, will be 260 and then we divide it by 1 plus 0 0.02. Now, if we calculate that, that's 260 divided by 1.02. So, to about uh, four decimal places, that's about 2.5490. Alright, and then we will take the initial price. Okay, so the adjusted price here at time zero will be the initial price minus the PV of the dividend. So, that will be $65 minus 2.5490. So that's uh let's sub calculate that. So that's sixty two point four five one. Now let us compute the price uh when the I mean when the share price goes up and goes down, which is S plus and S minus here. So in this case uh for S plus that will be the up factor times the adjusted price. Okay, uh which in this case is one point two five multiplied by sixty two point four five one. So that gives us 78.0638. Okay, so I'll just write that here. So that's 78.0638. And uh, for the lower, for S minus, so that will be 62.451 times 0 0.75, the down factor. So that gives us 46.8383. Right, we're done. And then now we move on to the second period where the share price will again go up or it can go down. Okay, so we'll just take the previous period's price. So that will be 78.0638 uh, multiplied by 1.25. So that's uh, 97.5798. For S plus minus, uh, we will take 78.0638 times 0 0.75. So that's uh, 58.5479. Now, of course, uh, you could have taken the price at S minus, which is 46.8383 times 1.25. You should also get 58.5479. And lastly, to get S minus minus, okay, you will take uh, 46.8383 times 0.75. So that's 35.1287. So we are done with that. So now we can calculate the payoff of the call option if, let's say, we wait for it to expire in period two. Now the op the call option payoff at expiration, okay, will be the maximum of uh, zero, and then the share price at the expiration, okay. I'll put it as S sub T minus the exercise price. So for uh, if the price is S plus plus, okay, which is greater than sixty, so definitely the call option is in the money. 
so the intrinsic value or the payoff or the exercise value uh, in this case will be 97.5798 minus 60 so that's 37.5798 so that's 37.5798 for s plus minus uh, the price of 58.5 dollars here is below 60 so the option is out of the money so the payoff will just be zero and similarly for 35 Point one two eight seven. This is less than the exercise price. So again, uh, this is out of the money. So that's zero. Then we move backwards to calculate C plus and C minus. Okay, the call option uh, value at period one. Now before that, we will need to have the risk neutral probability of the up move and the down move. And the formula to compute that. Uh, the pi here, the risk neutral probability, is 1 plus the risk free rate minus the down factor over the up factor minus the down factor. So that's uh, 1.02 minus 0 0.75 over 1.25 minus 0 0.75. Right, so let's calculate that. So that's uh, bracket 1.02 minus 0 0.75 uh, divided by uh, 1.25 minus 0 0.75. Okay, so that's 0. 5, 4. So the risk neutral probability of an up move here is 0 0.54 and there is a 0 0.46 probability that the payoff will be 0. Okay, and similarly we can use 0 0.54 and 0 0.46 here. So to compute, let's say, the, the call option value at uh, C plus, okay, so what we'll do here is uh, we will take so the C plus here will be the weighted average using the risk neutral probability multiplied by C plus plus and then we plus 1 minus pi multiplied by C plus minus and then we discount it at the risk free rate for one period. So we'll get a 0 0.54 here based on what we calculate multiplied by the payoff at C plus plus here which is 37.5798 plus a 0 0.46 times 0 since it's a 0 payoff here okay and then we will discount it okay we will divide it by 1 plus the risk free rate so that's 1.02 right so uh, for the numerator so that's uh, 0 0.54 times 37.5798 and of course uh, 0 0.46 times 0 is just 0 okay and then divide by 1.02 so uh, that's about 19.8952. So that's 19.8952. Uh, so this is 19.8952. Uh, okay. So I'm going to just assume that uh, we are not going to exercise early. We're just going to calculate, assuming that we just hold it until it, uh, I mean, up, and then we'll value it all the way back to period zero. And later on, we will see what happens if we do exercise early. Right now for C minus, okay, we're gonna do the same thing again, okay. But for C minus is quite is quite straightforward because uh, the payoff of the call option are both zero, okay, at both sides here, one and two. So in this case, we'll just take zero point five four times zero plus zero point four six times zero, and then divide by one point zero two. So that gives us zero here, okay. So this is just zero. And lastly, to get the call option value at period zero. So we'll now take the, again, use the risk neutral probability that we computed earlier and multiply it to the call option value that we computed again here. And then we'll get, uh, then we'll discount it back at 2%. All right. So in this case, uh, so C here, the value of the call at time zero will be 0 0.54 multiplied by 19.8952. Okay. Which is what we computed earlier plus 0 0.46 times uh, zero zero here and then we divide by 1.02 so let's see what that gives us so again uh, we have a uh, 0 0.54 times uh, 19.8952 plus zero okay and then divide by 1.02 so that gives us 10.5328 okay so that's 10.5328 okay so that's the call option value 10.5328 assuming that okay there is no early exercise so this would be similar to the value of a two period european call option okay since there is no early exercise we just uh we just assuming there is no exercise we just discount it all the way back to time zero 
All right, so that's uh, the this assuming that is a, a European call. Okay, we are not up to the point where it's an American call yet. All right, now before that, uh, let's complete uh, the other the missing pieces here, which is the hash ratio. Okay, for this uh, particular call option. Right now, to get the H ratio, okay, we will first uh, start off. We can start off from H plus or H minus or H. It's up to it's up to you. All right. So let's say if I start from uh, H plus here, okay. So to get the H ratio, so at H plus, the H ratio would be the difference in the call option payoff. So we'll take the call option payoff difference here. So which is a C plus uh, plus, and then against a C plus minus, and then we'll take the difference against S plus plus. And S plus minus. So uh, basically, what we are doing here is we are just taking the difference, in, the difference in the call option payoff, and the difference in the underlying price. Okay. So let's uh, we're gonna take C plus plus minus C plus minus over S plus plus minus S plus minus. All right. So with that, uh, with the two values here, okay, we have thirty-seven point five. We have thirty-seven point five seven nine eight. Okay, minus zero here, zero, and then divide by the the price. Uh, the price at S plus plus is ninety-seven point five seven nine eight. Okay, minus uh, S plus minus, which is fifty-eight, fifty-eight point five four seven nine. All right, let's see what we'll get here. So let's thirty-seven point five seven nine eight minus zero. Uh, divide by ninety seven point five seven nine eight minus fifty eight point five four seven nine, so that gives us uh, zero point nine six two eight. Okay, so that's uh, here we can write zero point nine six two eight. So let's just uh, double check the numbers there. So that's zero point nine six two eight. Okay, we'll interpret the numbers shortly. Okay, but for now we'll just fill in the missing uh, blanks there. Now for H minus, uh, if you take the difference in the call payoff, that's zero minus zero over fifty-eight point five four seven nine minus thirty-five point one two eight seven. So that is as good as zero. Okay. So of course, if there are values here, then you need to take the difference. Okay, in the call payoff and the underlying price. So lastly, to complete uh, H here. Uh, the final part H. So H here will just be C plus minus C minus over S plus minus S minus. All right. So that's uh, so we have uh, 19, 19.8952, assuming no early exercise, minus zero. Okay. And then we'll divide by the change, the difference in the price, 78.0638 minus 46.8383. Right. Let's see what we get there. So that's uh, 19, 19.8952. Uh, of course, you minus zero, and then you divide by 78.0638 minus 46.8383. Okay, so that's uh, 0 0.6371. All right, so that's uh, 0 0.6371. Now, these are the numbers that. Uh, these are the numbers that you will get if, let's say, this is a two-period uh, European call option on the underlying stock. Okay, but for the American call, shortly we will need to compare the call option value versus their early exercise value, especially at period one when there is a dividend paid or dividend expected. Now, in terms of uh, interpreting the ratio here, we will just cover that first before we look at the early exercise. Now, what these numbers actually tell us is that the H ratio, or we call this the delta of the option, this is the number of H that we will need. Let's say, for example, if today we are to, let's say, um, let's say if uh, I were to sell 10,000 call options. Okay, let's say today, let, let me make an assumption here that if uh, we are selling selling 10,000 call options and let's say that the call writer wants to hedge the position or they want to create a perfectly hedged portfolio so how many shares do would they need to long or short so based on the ratio of the hedge here okay so for every other uh, hedge ratio tells us here that for every one call option that we write uh, we will have to buy 0 0.6371 shares of the underlying okay so if i take 10,000 times 0 0.63 uh, 
1,071, that means uh, we will have to buy 6,371 shares okay, or of the underlying. So this is done at period 1. Now, one period later, if the share price goes up to 78.0638, now of course, uh, the, the price here, just to indicate that this is after we minus out the dividend. Okay, this is the share price excluding the dividend. If you want to know what is the share price with the dividend, then we will just add three, uh, add 260 to this uh, number. Right? Now, uh, what does the number 0 0.9628 here uh, represent? So this number here tells us that if the share price goes up to 78.0638, then we will have to increase the hedge ratio to 0 0.9628. In other words, at time 1, we for the 10,000 call options that we have sold or written, if we want to maintain a perfectly hedged portfolio, then you will need to have a long position of 9,628 shares of the underlying so that shows that we will need to buy additional shares and how many shares do we need to buy so 9628 minus 6371 that's an additional 3000 3257 shares okay so that's the number of shares needed okay if you want to maintain the h for this uh, so-called european call option and if the share price drops to 46.8383, then uh, you the H ratio is zero, which means that you this will become zero. So you will sell all the 6,371 shares. That's how you maintain the H, since the option is going to be out of the money. And lastly, if the share price goes up to uh, 97.5798, then uh, at this point, uh, of course, then of course uh, the share is like the option is likely to be in the money. So therefore, of course, uh, here we will need to maintain a higher number of shares, okay, to ensure that we have uh, the the writer will have enough shares to cover, okay, or to hedge the portfolio. All right, so we are done for the first part, okay, where we compute uh, the value of the call, assuming that it's a European call option. Uh, this is for comparison purposes. Now, of course, if it's uh, now if we assume that. We come back to the main question, which is assuming that it's an American call. Then what we'll need to do now is at time at period one, when there is an expected dividend of 260, we will need to calculate what is the exercise value. Okay, if we were to exercise the call option in period one, what is the exercise value? All right, so I'll just make clear some space here. So I'll just clear some space here and then I'll calculate the exercise value. Right, so let's say uh, at this point, okay, at this point when the share price is high, okay, then if we exercise early, so if there is early exercise, then the value of the call, okay, the value of the call will be the maximum of zero and then the share price plus the dividend minus the exercise price. So that would be the maximum of zero and then uh, S plus here is 78. Okay, 78.0638 plus the dividend of 260 minus the exercise price of 60. All right, so definitely this would be a positive number, but how much is that? So that's 78.0638 plus 260 minus 60. So the exercise value, the early exercise value is 20.6638. So that's uh, 20, 20.6638. And we compare that to the existing value of the call option, assuming that we still hold it and we don't exercise, the value is 19.8952. But if you exercise early, then the payoff will be 20.6638 with the share, the price of the share and the dividend that we are going to receive. So in this case, the value of exercising earlier is actually greater than the value okay, of the call option if you just continue to hold it. So what this tells us is that in this case, it is actually optimal. It is actually optimal to exercise early. So with that, uh, we will then cut this off. Okay, we will then cut this, meaning that we will decide. Okay, we will decide to exercise early. So the value is 20.6638. Okay, so we will use this value now to compute the call option value at time zero. Now, of course, uh, here we don't have to do anything because uh, the share price 
is below the exercise price even if i add in the dividend okay if even if i take uh, 46.8383 plus 260 it's still going to be less than the exercise price so definitely we will not exercise early so it's just zero here okay so there's nothing further to do so what is the call option value now at time zero okay so again to finish that final part off i'll just uh, make some space here so let's say if I were to just move down here, okay. So in this case, just to create some space, so the adjusted value, okay, assuming that we did exercise earlier at time one, all right. So the we'll just again use the same formula, pi times c plus, uh, plus one minus pi times c uh, plus minus over one plus r, okay. And this time around, uh, the pi here will be zero point five four again. Uh, the C plus here will be 20.6638, okay, 20.6638 plus 0 0.46 times 0, and then divide by 1.02. Let's see what we get here. So 0 0.54 times 20.6638, uh, then we divide by 1.02, so that's 10.9397. right and the value is indeed higher than what we calculated previously so we'll just replace this okay so i'll replace this with 10.9397 so this becomes 10 10.9397 okay if uh, for this american call option that will last for two periods so you see that with uh if the dividend is large enough okay the american call option value can be higher than the equivalent european call option Okay, but if the dividend is not large enough, there is still a chance that the early exercise is not viable. Okay, so here of course 260, at 260, early exercise is viable. But if I reduce this to maybe $2 or 150, then probably early exercise is not worth the while. Okay, so, uh, so with a dividend, it doesn't always guarantee that the American call value will be greater than the uh, European call value. Okay, it's there's a possibility there but if there's no dividend at all uh, definitely the american call option uh, will not be any greater than the european call option now uh, for the remaining uh, there's a h ratio here since that since we changed the payoff definitely the h ratio will change okay uh, so in this case, uh, if you are calculating for let's say period zero right so because we changed the payoff here from uh, to 20.6638 so for at time zero the h ratio will now be if you recalculate that that's 20.6638 uh minus zero okay then we divide by 78.0638 uh, minus 46.8383 all right so that's uh, 0 0.6618 so we change this to 0 0.6618 okay just to check the number again so that's the uh, H ratio if this is an American call option. So if now, for this case, if I were to sell uh, 1,000 call options, and this time I will have to buy 6,618 shares of the underlying. All right, so that uh, concludes the video uh, where we use the binomial option pricing model to value a two-period American call option on a stock. Okay, so when there is a dividend, be careful of the adjustment. You will have to discount the dividend to the initial period zero to adjust the underlying price at time zero and then use that adjusted price to compute the, uh, the prices at period one and in this case period two as well. Then you calculate the option payoff at expiration. Then you calculate the risk neutral probability, discount it back to period one and then, uh, of course, if you want to be quick, you can immediately calculate the value of exercising early and then see if it's greater than the existing uh, call option value. If it's greater, then we will exercise early. But if the, uh, the payoff from early exercise is lower, then we, don't, we will not exercise earlier. Okay, so then it will not make any difference there. So that's uh, just a conclusion. Okay, just something, just a quick wrap up there. Right, that's the end of the video.